Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. Uh, we are in week 8, uh, session, uh, session 4 actually and we are discussing market basket analysis. Till now we have discussed about the what is the requirement of market basket analysis and the basic easier version of the algorithm. Now let us talk about a priori algorithm which is the advanced version which can be used for larger data sets. So, I was here in this presentation, uh, I will just scroll it up and I, I was basically just one minute, I was here in the presentation, yes. So, I was talking about find the rule in two stages for this particular thing. So, find all items with a specified minimal support. So, first of all you will not do it for everybody, I will only find out those guys which have minimal support. So, item set is just as a specific set of items like I told when apples and cheese occurred, what was the rule if you remember when apples and cheese occurs honey also occurs. So, apple and cheese is the item set. So, the first I will choose such kind of combinations which has a minimum cutoff, minimum support. So, what is that let us say uh, I will say 10, 10 out or at least 1 percent, 1 percent of the whole data set they should occur, less than 1 percent will not even consider those combination that is number 1. Now, these use these items as to help generating the rules. So, you do not create a rule, you just break based on certain conditions. So, having done stage 1, we have considerably narrowed down the possibilities and we can do reasonably fast processing on the large item sets to generate candidate rules. So, but this is what we do. So, we find out all the products and market of uh, proportion of market baskets containing this item and then we do something. So, for an example, terminology says that there are k item set let us say, a set of k items. So, it is if it is a 3 item set that means a set of 3 items, if it is a 1 item set then it is a set of 1 item, 2 item set means it is a set of 2 items. What is support? An item set has s percentage support that means in the data set there are s percentage transactions which has these 2 guys together. And what is the minimum support? The priori algorithm starts with the specification of a minimum support. So, we do not use all item sets, we only use those item sets which has a minimum number of occurrences. Let us say if my database is 20 million as I told 20 million and I am saying 1 percent should occur. That means what? That means basically 200,000 times that item set should occur. 1 percent is a very big number actually, we do not even say 1 percent, we say 0 0.01 percent. 0.01 percent means 1 by 1000, 10 to the power 4. So, 20 million comes to be 20 million 0.01 percent is basically how much? 2000. So, 2000 times one item set should occur, then only we will go ahead and create the rule, otherwise, I will not create the rule. So, that is the first job. What is a large item set? Does not mean an item set which with many items, it means one whose support is at least higher than the minimum support. That is how we use this large item set definition. So, L k is the set of all large k item sets in the database and C k is a set of candidates. So, C k is a set of candidate large k item sets. In the algorithm we look at it generates this set which contains all k item sets which might be large and then eventually. So, C k is basically one particular item set in LK, LK is the superset of all large K item sets in DB and what is large? Large is basically the num item sets which has support more than the cutoff. So, that is something that we will use, these terminologies will use to define the algorithm. Now, here you just see that which are the three item sets. So, if this is the product, uh, one of the three item set is A, B, H and A, B, H is occurring here, A, B and H is occurring here and then A, B and H is occurring here, A, B and H is occurring here. So, ID number 1, 18 and 19 in these three cases A, B and H is happening. So, A, B and H is a three item set, three dash item set because three items are there. Its support is 3 by 20 which is 15 percent right here, yeah. this which is 15 percent. Similarly, A comma I is a two item set whose support is 0 percent, nowhere it is occurring and etcetera. 
So, now if I take the cutoff as 10 percent, then this guy will be a part of my large, this guy will be a large item set. So, if the minimum support is 10 percent, then B is a large item set, you see that, but B, C, D, H is a small item set, because this is occurring only 5 percent, but B is occurring 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is a one item item set, which is occurring 6 time out of 20, that means 30 percent, so which is a large item set. So, minimum support is 10 percent. So, the a priori algorithm for finding large items, item sets efficiently in big DV, uh, databases. So, this is the algorithm that is saying. So, it find all large one item sets that is the first job that means find out which items are occurring at least 10 percent of times if that is your cast off. Then for k is equal to 2 while l k minus 1 is non empty k plus plus. So, when l k minus 1 is non empty it is not blank then increase the k otherwise keep the k like that. So, if two items are not occurring 10 percent times then three item will not occur three 10 percent times that is let us say a and b together are not occurring 10 percent times then can a b h occur 10 percent times no right. So, if a and b this is not occurring 10 percent times that means a and b is not a part of the large data set large item set then a b h cannot be a part of the large item set. So, you will find further find out item sets for only those guys whose individual items were there in the earlier version. That means, let us say when you am trying to analyze two item set, I will only use those products for which one item set was a part of the large category. So, to give an example, let us give an example what I am trying to say here. I am trying to say I will just change the page size and etcetera. Okay, let us talk out, let us make it. Okay, so, I am trying to say that I have item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4 and item 5 and these items, this has 30 percent, this is 5 percent, this is 25 percent, this is 9 percent and this is 12 percent. Fair enough. Now, I am saying that I will find out two combinations. Now, if 2 has occurred only 5 percent times, then 2 comma 4 can it occur more than 5 percent times? No, because 2 has occurred. So, out of where 2 has occurred, one subset is where 2 and 4 will occur. So, this will be always lower than this, the percentage of this will always be lower than this. So, I will rather will not see any combination which has this probably. So, I will probably also not see any combination which has this. I will see only the combinations of these guys. So, that is something which is important to understand that ok. So, this guy, this person, this person and this person is something that I will consider, because the 1 and 3 happening together will be always be lower than the individual probability. So, 1 happening together. So, this is something. So, from here what are the two item things I will say, then I will say that 1 3 I will check, 1 5 I will check and 3 5 I will check, fair enough. Now, let us say 1 3 is around 20 percent and 1 5 is around let us say uh, 9 percent and 3 5 is around let us say uh, 11 percent, fair enough. Now, what is the probability that 1 comma 3 5 comma happen? See, one subset of this is 1 3, another subset of this is 1 5, 1 3 occurs 20 percent, 1 5 occurs 9 percent. So, this guy has to be lower than 9 percent, has to be because out of those cases where 1 5 occurs, there are some cases where 3 also occurs. So, this guy has to be lower than 9 percent. So, I will practically not consider this combination, because this is the combination which is not a large one, 10 percent was my cut off. So, then I will, so if I do not consider this basically I am not consider other two combinations will also give me this. So, I am not consider any three item set. So, the only five 
only item sets which are there in my these things. These are my L 1s and these are my L 2. L 3 is 0, L 3 is blank, non empty. empty. So, only for M non empty data sets it is saying whenever L k minus 1 is non empty then only you go ahead otherwise you do not go ahead otherwise you do not increase k and then you do the same thing you find out what are the how many sets are there how many counts are there the one that I just shown in the in the in the basic uh, picture they find out the count. So, they reduce the number of choice sets. So, the you, you can run this particular algorithm in the database and you will find out that these are the three item sets which has 10 percent support. How do you generate the four item sets might have 10 percent support. So, anybody which one combination of these you will find out and if they have 10 percent support then you consider them as four item sets. So, so, one possibility is that note all of these items are involved A, B, C, E, F, G, H to R generate all possible four, uh, four combinations and then you find out who of them is, but that will again take lots of times. But hold on, we can easily see that A, B, C, E could not have 10 percent support because A, B, E is not one of our three item sets. See A, B, E was not at all in our three item set. So, A, B, E cannot have 10 percent support. So, then A, B, C, E also cannot have 10 percent support if A, B, E cannot have 10 percent support. So, I have to create combinations in such a way such that these guys, so the, the all, all the, the, the subset of the original these combinations are there here, all the possible subsets. So, A, B, C has to be there, B, C has to be there, A, C, all possible subset of the four item combination should be here. Then only we can go ahead and find out that particular guy's support, otherwise, we will not find out. So, the same goes for several other of these subsets. So, in for that subsets are always arranged lexicographically and they are already on the left. Only generate k plus 1 items uh, from k items which differ in the last item. So, that is what is the algorithm that they are giving. And in this case, the only 5 items will be. A E G R W and N Q R T F. You can check that. So only the last item they are changing. The first three items they are putting it lexicographically and changing the last item. So this trick guarantees to capture the items that have enough support. We'll still generate some candidates that don't have enough support. So we'll still have to check them in the pruning step, and it's particularly convenient for implementation in a standard and relational style transactional database. So, that is what happens in the background of a a priori algorithm. So, there is some example given I will not spend my time on this example you can check out and then we try out and find out the rules that what kind of rules and what can you say about the coverage of apples and mills we can invest several uh, potential rules if basket contains apples and bananas it also contains milk. So, this is something. So, support of A B is 40 percent which what is the confidence of this rule you have to find out that. So, the items has been taken from these two uh, links you can also go and read about read more details from these links and in the next video we will actually do in a hands on way how to deal with this thing. So, some appendix and this thing is also there in the presentation you can look out and try out on your own. So, thank you for being in this particular video we have discussed the algorithm and we have discussed the usage of marketing ba market basket analysis in a uh, quite a bit. In the next video, we will actually discuss how to do it in R in a hands on way. Thank you very much.